Carts leave the grid for this Junior Rotax final and that is Archie Hogan on the 13 and fortunately for Archie Hogan the Robbie rule based on Robbie Rathbone's spin coming off the grid exactly like that some well a couple of years ago I think now that Robbie rule is not in effect the Robbie rule of course is if you spin on the formation lap you have to start at the back of the field wherever your grid position uh, denotes you should be. Archie Hogan's grid position should be P5. You can see, I think he's trying to make his way back to P5. I'm not sure whether he's going to get there, but as they come through the final turn, grid positions for the final on your screen. Ben Jones after the uh, did not start, I think it was. And we're going round again, by the way. That DNS affected Ben Jones's grid position for this final we're on board here with Alfie Lambert and as you can see I suggested earlier conditions were changeable we're expecting rain rain has come and everybody I think is on wet tires you can see here that clearly Alfie Lam Lambert's on wet oh my goodness the formation lap is the Robbie rule in effect no it isn't but is he going to get back in position I don't think he will from there He's not going to be allowed to just charge his way through. They will expect him to stay in position. Let's see what he does. I'm not sure he will stay in position, quite frankly. So he come through the double apex, then back up the return straight into the S's. Oh, somebody else has spun as well. Alfie Lambert now tries to recover his position, charges his way through. He's not going to get back to his original grid position, surely. He's making up places, though, but they're not going to allow him to get as far forward as he would like to be. He's remonstrating, but that's his fault. He's supposed to be starting right at the back, to be honest, if you spin off on the formation lap. Here we go, though. The uh, rain is coming down. They've all got wet tyres on. Kasari Vajarek runs wide. The winner of both earlier heats and Pullman in this one, he's down to fifth place currently. We're back on board with Alfie Lambert. Trying to recover positions, he went through the line in 15th place. He was supposed to start P8, but obviously spinning off didn't help him. And that is Kasari Vajarek, the winner of both heats earlier on. The pole man sitting on the grass in the hairpin. A little bit of a nudge there on Ethan Waters. Out of the double apex, that looks like 57. That's Jackson Lane and then Drew Priesner recovering. Let's have a look at the replay. He was down a fifth place. Kasari Vitrek through turn one. He's taken a big wide line. That gives him all the grip on the outside to give a run. But it looks like Eric Smith was the meat and a sandwich there. Had nowhere to go. Eric Smith did nothing wrong, by the way. It was his front wheel that clipped the rear wheel of Vitrek, but nothing Smith could have done. Adam Catling. He's now running P2. I did say earlier in the heats, he's got a lot of quality. The champion from last year, we know that. But he's not had the best day so far. He struggled, but here come the conditions that he seems to like. And Catling through to second. And George Daniels, by the way, set the fastest lap and has a nearly two-second lead at the end of the last tour. We're on board here again with Lambert. And that looks like the 13 card of Archie Hogan. As we went past, he spun it round. Well, I think we can get another look from a different angle. There you go, he's running wide. That's where all the grip is. He's got the run out of the corner, tags the car on the inside, puts his hand up. But as three, four, five, six cars go by, seven, eight, he's down the field. Archie Hogan, one of the potential winners of this race, is out. And down the field, that's Ben Wilson. Another driver, we know he's quick. Had the fastest lap in one of the earlier heats. I think it was heat one. He held the fastest lap at one point. That's the on-board cameraman, Alfie Lambert. He goes up the inside of one on the outside of another. And just like that, Alfie Lambert there on the 41 car is up to fifth place. Out of the double apex, up to the Wilson S's. Making moves is Drew Priesner on the nine. He's on the outside, coming out of the S's. That won't work. He's on the grass. He'll recover it onto the tarmac. Will he hold position? That actually will help him as the 53 gives him a nudge. That's uh, Jay Kander's giving him a nudge. That will have helped him carry on. And in fact, look at that, on the nine car, he's held on to that position. Drew Priesner, it is there that leads this battle for six. Now as the 57, Jackson Lane looks up the inside. Lane started P12, by the way, there it is, confirmed. Started P12, he's now up to seventh place. So he's made five places in this final so far. Conditions clearly a lot different from the earlier dry heats. Everybody on wet tyres, 
It's caught out Kasari Vitarek at the start. He ran wide, lost five places, got tagged up in the hairpin, and you have to feel for Kasari Vitarek, but he will come again. George Daniels it is that's taken advantage, of course. He leads the race. There's his picture. We've not seen much of him, but 5.4 seconds and change is his lead as he went through the line. That's Lambert going through. Then Jackson Lane's in front of Priest now from Anders Mufakir and Ethan Waters there in the top 10. Jay Leverton comes next from McGillicuddy. First time I've mentioned McGillicuddy all day. He's there now in the top 12, 37 there. And the back of this group is Ethan Waters coming into the hairpin. That yellow flag waving is not for the hairpin, it's for the final turn. We've got Aaron Rowland off in the final turn. You can just about make him out, out of shot of the cameras at the moment. There he is in fact, that is Aaron Rowland in Stanlow Bend. He, he recovers it, gets it going again, but well down the field. That was what the yellow flag was for. You might think when you're looking at it, that's the yellow flag for the hairpin, no overtaking, but it's not, it's for this turn here. Uh, and uh, flag has been taken in now. Getting a bit squirrely was the five car of uh, Mufakir. He comes through the line alongside the uh, 53 car, but doesn't lose the place. That's Jay Kanders. This is now the battle for ninth, headed by Mufakir. The 12 car gets out of the way. That's Charlie Howard. Good driving by Charlie. He's one of the back markers today. He's not had the best of weekends, but he'll come again with a name like Howard. You would expect that, although he's spelt incorrectly. He, of course, being so young, will not remember Mike Howard, but he was one of the best drivers in the world at one stage. Spelled H-A-I-L Wood, not H-A-L-E, of course. It's all settled down a bit in terms of battling, but as they come through the line, just going through the line is Eric Smith there. He's 10 seconds behind the leader. George Down has got a seven-second lead over Adam Catlin. Catlin will be happy with this recovery drive as they come through the line. Jackson Lane there in sixth place. This is a good recovery by Jackson gone from P12 to 6. Well, I expect him to be battling for wins this season, frankly, Jackson Lane. And uh, good to see him come back in this final. Sixth place, not bad when you start P12. This is the battle for 15th. Rossi Costello's just been overtaken by Archie Hogan. Ben Gordon and Ben Wilson in the mix. Wilson, we know, is quick. And we know Ben Gordon's quick as well on his day as Wilson makes his way past into the hairpin. Ben Gordon tries to fight back, just tags the back end of Wilson. That slowed Gordon's progress down. 15th place here for Archie Hogan coming through the double apex, but not for long. Spins himself out, all his own work. He's lost two, three, four. It's going to be five places as a consequence of that. Hits the steering wheel. Frustrating day for Archie Hogan, who drops from 15th. I think that will be to something like 20th. At the end of this lap, that's Kasari Vitarek starting pole now into back into the top 10. But what a disappointing day for the man who dominated the early heats in the great conditions. Come the rain through turn one, runs wide, and it's cost him big time. He's got to take the positives out of the weekend, but for somebody of his quality, he only thinks about winning, frankly. I remember my son coming second in the national championships up at Lark Hall in Scotland and all the way back in the van, he had a face like a smack backside, to be honest with you. He wasn't happy with second that day. Kasari Vitarek could have, would have, should have today, but unfortunately, it's none of those things. Could have won, should have won, would have won. Didn't. Drew Priestner there on the nine car. He's just about to go past Aaron Rowland on the 43, who's recovering after his earlier spin. Priestner in seventh. That's a new name for me but I will be looking out for him during the rest of the season because he looks like he's got some qualities moving forward, as has Alfie Lambert there, the 41 car. He's carrying the on-board camera, not getting anything from it now. He's got an empty track in front of him and running wide is the 15. That's Callum Moyer, who's being overtaken. He's trying to get out of the way of this battle for third and fourth. That's Eric Smith and Joe Murphy going through the line. Here they come. This is the main battle, I suspect, on the track. Ten seconds between first and second and another five seconds back to this battle. So this is the main battle as we pro approach the business end of the race. Through the hairpin, great overtaking opportunity if you're close enough. And uh, the man in fourth place there, Joe Murphy, in the 48 car as he come through the double apex. He wasn't close enough that time, but he may try and set that up for next time. Up the return straight into the Wilson Nassies. Can't make a move here, could make a move in the final turn. He's going to take, well, I was going to say he's going to take a wider line there to a different line to the man in front, but didn't. Here they come into the turn one. That was a great example there 
of how a cart turns. There's no differentials on carts. It's a solid axle. And Adam Catling's cart there gave us a great example. Let's have a look as he turns in. Look at the inside rear wheel lifting off the ground. It has to lift off to the ground just enough. If it lifts too much, you oversteer and spin the cart. If it lifts too little, you scrub the cart on and you understeer. But that was a great example there, particularly in the wet. You want to see maybe about an inch off the ground for wet tyres. On slicks, a lot less than that. Probably a couple of millimetres will do just to make the cart turn. That's the sort of perfect uh, conditions. In the wet, though, I don't mind seeing the wheel lift around about an inch or so off the ground. Wet conditions, that means you've got good turn in. Last lap as you go through the line. Smith leading their battle for third place from Joe Murphy. Oh, not for long, though. Murphy slides up the inside at turn two at the gate. And Murphy, I'm not sure what happened to Eric Smith there. As we look at the battle for 20, that's Charlie Ivall on the 10. He's got the inside line. The 56 cart is Dylan Fitzhenry. Not sure there what happened to Eric Smith going through turn two, but that's George Daniels, your race winner. Pretty much the first time we've seen him. Is he happy, though? He's happy about that. He don't mind the fact that he's not been seen too much. He just wants the win. Here comes Adam Catling for second place on the one cart. Catling will be happy with his recovery. He's shaking his head. He knows he's capable of winning races. That's Joe Murphy, who's through to third place then, through turn two on the final tour. Eric Smith finishes in fourth from Alfie Lambert in fifth. Jackson Lane, Drew Priesner, Ilyas Mufakir in the top ten in eighth. Then Jake Anders and Kasari Vitarek, unfortunately, down in tenth.